For this hot project, you are going to need a 41 peg large gauge loom, a skein of yarn that's a number six bulky yarn and at least 87 yards. You need your needle tool, your yarn needle, it can be plastic or metal, a pair of scissors, and you may also want a notebook handy with a pencil or a pen. You may also use a row counter. This is just for keeping track of your rows. So the first step is to create our brim for our hat. So go ahead and you're going to attach your yarn to your anchor peg. I'm creating a slip knot here to tie on, but you can just make a simple little tie around your anchor peg because it will be something that you take off after you cast on. We are going to use the e-wrap cast on, so you're simply just going to e-wrap every single peg on your loom. Once all of your pegs are wrapped once, you are going to go ahead and wrap that working yarn around your anchor peg and hold it down with your thumb and go ahead and use your fingers to push all of the loops down to the bottom of your pegs. So for our second loop on our pegs, we're going to do the U-wrap version of the knit stitch. So remove your working yarn from the anchor peg and you're going to go to the front of your peg and half wrap your peg using your other fingers to hold it in place. You'll take your needle tool to knit off the bottom loop. It's going to go over the top loop and off the peg. You are going to continue this for each peg. So I'll show you again. You take your working yarn, you wrap it around the second peg, lift your bottom loop up over the top loop and off the peg. Once more, take it to the front of your peg, you wrap behind, grab that yarn with your other hand to hold it in place, and knit off with your needle tool. So now I'm finishing my last peg and now I'm going to remove the slip knot from my anchor peg. And what I do is just take that yarn and stick it between the first and last peg, just let it hang down the middle until the end of the project. So now we are ready to start the next row of our brim. For the next six to eight rows for our brim, you are going to be alternating between the U-wrap and the purl stitch. On peg number one, go ahead and do the U-wrap and knit off. On peg number two, you are going to take your working yarn and place it below the loop that is on the peg. You're going to take your needle tool above that loop and place it down into it. Tug the loop out just a tad so you can grab on to the working yarn and pull it up through the loop to make a new loop. And now you are going to remove the old loop off of the peg and replace it with the new loop you created and tug on that working yarn so that way you can make it snug around the peg. On the third peg you will go back to the U-wrap and knit off and the fourth peg you will do a purl stitch. You will continue to alternate between the U-wrap and the purl stitch until you get to peg number 40. And I'm just going to take a moment to mention that I really regret not using stitch markers 
in this project um, because of this brim part. I got myself confused some of the time, so it, it took me a little longer to retrace my steps and make sure I was doing the right stitch. So I definitely recommend that you get some stitch markers either from the craft store or you can even use the tiny little elastics that you would use for a child's hair. Um, those are perfect and they're very inexpensive. So you could just place the elastics on all of the odd numbered pegs and then you would know on each odd one you are doing a U-wrap and then on the ones that are not marked you would be doing the purl stitch. And also keep in mind, this loom has 41 pegs, so it is an odd number. So the last two pegs, number 40 and 41, um, you are going to do purl stitches on both of those last pegs. So now we're coming around to the last two pegs. Peg 40 is already expected to be a purl stitch, but remember, peg 41 is an odd number, so that would mess up our alternating stitches. So we are just going to make sure we always do a purl stitch for peg 41 when we're doing our brim. So after our first row, we are just going to repeat this for seven more rows. You're going to alternate between the U-wrap and the purl stitch on your pegs, remembering that each time your last peg is always a U-wrap. So right here, I realized that on my last row, I forgot to mark that I completed it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make a tally mark here and I'm going to write brim because I wanna keep track of how many rows that I'm going to do. My intention was to do eight rows, um, but then I just decided that I was going to go with two rows more um, for a little bit of a thicker brim. So when you do eight rows, you're going to have about 1.5 inches of a brim. And if you add two more rows for a total of 10, you're going to have about a two inch wide brim. So this is where you guys can make a personal decision on whether you want the wider brim or not. Now we are going to start the body of our hat. If you did 10 rows in your brim, it's going to be about 30 more rows for the body. If you only did eight, then you're looking at about 32 more rows for the body. So now I'm going to push all my pegs down to the bottom and I'm on this next row, I'm going to E-wrap all of my pegs. Now this part of the pattern is going to be what is called a garter stitch. So for the first row of the garter stitch, we are doing the E-wrap around each peg. And once I have two loops on every peg, I take my working yarn, wrap it once around the anchor peg, and go to my last peg and knit off of that peg first. Because then my working yarn, I don't have to worry about that unraveling. And then I will go to the first peg and knit off all of the remaining pegs. And once you are completed this row, the next row is going to be an entire row of purl knit stitches. Now don't forget to keep track of the rows that you're completing. So after I finish the E-wrap row, I'm just writing E-wrap here and I'm going to do one tally. And I'm going to write purl underneath. And when I complete the purl row, I will make a tally. So again, on this next complete row, I'm going to do all purls. So to do that, you're going to put your working yarn under the loop on your first peg, scoop the yarn up into the loop to create a new one, 
remove the old loop, replace it with the new loop, and tug on your working yarn. You will do a purl for each peg in this round. All right, and I am finishing this row of pearls, which means I'm going to mark that I have done a row of pearls in my notebook, and then I am going to move on to another row of e-wraps. I am going to alternate between a row of e-wraps and pearls, and I'm going to continue this for approximately 30 rows. So once you're finished the 30 rows for the body of your hat, you're going to do two rows of e-wraps. And sorry guys, I lost a clip of me doing those last two rows. It skips ahead to me doing the final part of this hat. And what you're going to want to do is take your working yarn and wrap it about one and a half times to two times around your loom and you can cut it off. And I show you real quick how much yarn I have left from my skein. That is it. Truly used all 87 yards for this project. So I'd have a little more, maybe 90 yards, just to make sure you're not working that close to the end of the skein. So I'm going to do a drawstring cast off now. And it's going to kind of look like a purl stitch, but this time you're going to pull the entire end of your yarn through that loop. Now don't go off of your peg yet. We're going to do this for each peg. So again, you're going to act as if you're doing the purl stitch. You're going to grab that yarn, pull it up, and just pull it through until the tail comes through the whole way. And repeat this for all 41 pegs. So now that we have done this with every single peg, we are going to be safe to remove the pegs from the loom. And that simply just looks like using your needle tool to pop it off the top, and you're going to do that for each peg. So now I'm finishing the last pegs and I pop that last one off and we are officially off of the loom. All right, so here I am, cast it off. I'm pointing out here that I have a little bit of laddering in my hat, but that'll just be the back of my hat. Um, so what you wanna do is take that tail end of your yarn and you're going to start to pull it. Make sure you're not Put it, pulling this too hard because I have snapped my yarn before and that is really frustrating when you're this far into the end of your project. So pull on that drawstring a little bit and push it down to the inside of your hat and now turn your hat inside out and you're going to continue to tug on that yarn to close the circle as much as you can. So the tail of my yarn can be shortened quite a bit. I take a little length off and then I see it's still remaining a little long, so I cut off a little bit more. I do like to leave a good amount just in case I do snap my yarn. I'm going to thread my yarn needle and I'm going to begin to close the circle even more. Okay, so I'm gonna show you here about how big the hole is. I can stick my finger there and I'm gonna tighten it up just a little bit. But from where my yarn comes out, I'm gonna go right across from that and I'm going to start placing the needle through those top stitches, those top loops at the hole. And I'm just gonna do this so I can get a tighter circle at the top. So I go through a few stitches at a time and then I'm just gonna pull it and kind of tug on it so it tightens it as I go around.
And I'm just going to leave this in here. You can see that I struggle a little bit with the yarn, um, the tail of the yarn being so long. But now that I've situated that and gotten it a little tighter, I'm going to go through a few more stitches and do the same thing that I just did, tugging that yarn through. And you can see that circle emerge, but I'm just going to pull it a little more. Um, I realize then I kind of have to hold the top together so that yarn doesn't keep you know, pulling out a little bit. And I'm just gonna do this a few times until I feel comfortable that maybe when I let go that that circle is not showing up every time I do that. So once I go through a few more stitches, you're going to see that when I let go with my left hand, that that middle circle is not re-emerging. So once I see that, I know it's tight enough, but I'm just doing a few more stitches just for good measure to make sure it really is secure there. So now that I'm comfortable where I'm at with this, I'm going to go ahead and tie my knot. So I'm going to go across from where my working yarn is coming out and go under one or two of those stitches. I'm going to create a loop and I'm just going to take my yarn needle and place it between that loop and tug on that a little bit to start my knot. And then I'm going to go through another stitch and create another loop and stick my yarn needle through that loop to do like a double knot there. And I love to be sure that my yarn is secure and that we're not gonna unravel, so you'll see me do that once again. And now that I feel comfortable with that, I'm going to tug on that knot and I'm gonna use my scissors and I'm gonna cut just above the knot, giving a little bit of a tail, but you don't need much. So now that that's complete, we have about one or two more steps depending on what you want to do. So turn your hat to the right side and we're going to focus on the edge of the brim now. It does look great as is, but I personally like to have tighter stitches on the edges, so I'm going to show you how to do that. But again, you can leave it as is and skip this step. So I'll show you in better detail here in a minute, but you're simply going to be looking at these loops and you're going to be tugging them on them in a particular direction. So you're going to be like tugging them and then feeding that excess yarn through the entire brim of the hat until you return to the tail where you're able to pull out of all of that slack out of the brim there. Um, I had some trouble with this kind of yarn, but um, I end up getting through it. <laughs> so anyways, let's go ahead and begin. So in the very beginning, I start realizing I have trouble with this. Um, so actually what I'm going to do is you'll see here in a second, I am going to work with my hat upside down so I can use my right hand to pull those loops. And you can see that I am working to the right side of my yarn and I'm just looking for the right loop to start. And you can see that when I pull on that, it's starting to give me a lot of slack. So I'm gonna pull that and then once I get that, that big loop, then I'm gonna go right under it and pull the next loop right beside it. And that is feeding all of that slack to the right until I get to the end, which is the tail end of the yarn. So I'm gonna keep working in that direction to pull it. And you can see that I do get it tighter. Now, again, this type of yarn I was having some trouble with. It kind of got it got knotted up within the brim um, and that could have been some mistakes I made while I did my cast on. Um, so I do struggle a little bit here and I'm going to fast forward through that but um, you can see you kind of get the gist of what I'm doing here to feed that extra yarn through the brim.
So yay, I'm excited. I finally made it through this part. You can see all that slack comes out of that tail end of yarn. But now we still have to hide that tail. Um, so if you skipped the part of the brim where you are tightening it, now you can resume with this last step. So make sure you turn your hat inside out again. And you can see here, I'm just cutting a little bit of the extra yarn off my tail so I don't have so much in the way. And I'm going to thread my yarn needle. And what I'm going to do is thread the yarn up the stitches in the brim of my hat. So I call these knit stitches, they look like braids to me. So I'm just going to go up into the braid right above the working yarn and go through a few stitches at a time. I'm going to thread it through and I'm going to go through the next few stitches until I get to the body of my hat. So when we get to the top of the brim, we're going to feed our needle through the other side of stitches. First, I create a little loop and make a tiny little knot before I go down the remaining stitches on the other side. And I'm only gonna go down about halfway in this brim and then I'm just gonna cut the tail and then I'm finished. And no need for a knot or anything. You can just cut it off and flip your hat on the right side out. And congratulations, you guys are finished your hat. I think it's absolutely stunning. I love to do the garter stitch. It's simple, but it looks so nice. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you want to see any more tutorials in the future, comment below and let me know what projects you would be interested in in the future. See you next time.